Hey everyone, so in this video we are going to talk about the settings that you need for Amazon FBA. I'm going to take you inside Seller Central as a new starter on Amazon FBA and I'm going to tell you exactly the settings that you need to pay attention to and how to set them up for success on your own Amazon Seller Central. So let's get started. So the first step will be to go here inside your Amazon Seller Central. You're going to see this little icon. So hit it. And you're going to want to make sure that your business address is correctly set up. As you see, uh, if it shows verified, that means that Amazon has correctly verify your business address. So you want to make sure that the address is formatted well and, and everything is looking okay. Then here under display name, you are basically going to choose how you want your storefront to be named. This is what the users will see when they go to your uh, product or when you buy, when you are owning the buy box this is what the users will see as your name. For example, Great Products LLC or whatever you want to name, this is a display name that you're going to be choosing for your storefront. Under here, Legal Entity, this is where you're going to be making sure that your tax information is entered correctly. You're going to go through an entire series of questions that Amazon will ask you to verify your tax information. They won't be able to pay you unless your tax information is correctly verified. Here, Merchant Token, if you go here, you will see that you Amazon has assigned you a Merchant Token specific to yourself and to your storefront. And you can use this merchant token to plug into software like um, Source Module and Tactical Arbitrage that need API access to your Amazon Seller Central account. So whenever you see the words merchant token, know that you can find it right here under business information on your Amazon Seller account. In terms of business insurance, you don't have to worry about business insurance until you reach $10,000 of products sold. After you reach $10,000 of products sold, Amazon will send you an email automatically saying that you need to start worrying about business insurance and they will even send you links to recommended partner insurance companies that they work with. And that's exactly what I did. I use their recommendations. I shopped around, I think, three different insurance companies. I pick one, the cheapest one. Uh, I think I'm covered for like a million dollars or two million dollars of insurance. And then they ask you to verify by uploading your document number. So it's a pretty simple process. But again, you don't have to worry about that until you start selling a significant amount of product. This area right here of shipping and returns information, I don't personally use. This is reserved for FBM fulfilled by merchants. So if you're doing FBA, you don't really need to worry about that. Again, tax information. Um, if you're from the UK or somewhere outside of the United States, you probably need to enter that information. Make sure that your tax information is taken care of right here as well. This is very important on payment information, deposit methods. This is where you're going to enter your bank information so that Amazon knows where your payments will be going to. If you want to get paid, you need to take care of this right away. Deposit methods. On the same token, charge methods. Amazon needs to know where they can charge you in case uh, you are running a negative balance. This is where you haven't made enough sales and Amazon is charging you for your professional plan or other fees and you're running a negative balance, they need to know uh, what credit card or bank they are going to charge you. If you don't have this information in place or it's expired, you run a risk of getting your account suspended or momentarily paused because it's very important for Amazon to charge you if you're running at a loss. 
Another important setting that you might want to partic- uh, personalize for your own experience is notification. Amazon will send you a bunch of different notifications every time that they ship an item, every time there is a refund, um, every time that there is a suggestion. Anyway, you can pick and choose which notifications you want to receive and on which email or text or whatever you want to receive it at. So one of the most important settings is here. Go go on the little thing, uh, on the little icon, and go to Fulfillment by Amazon. Click there, and it will take you to a set of options that you really need to customize for your own experience. And I'll go ahead and explain them. So here the labeling option is if you, for example, want to use Amazon as your prep center, which I wouldn't recommend because... Uh, even though they are less expensive, they only really label. So you, if you're going to use a prep center, use um, a proper prep center. But if you do want to use Amazon for a labeling service, then they will charge you around 55 cents just to put a label, um, not to ship or anything like that. And And then here you can customize that experience. So this one here is very important. Allow Amazon to buy my products to sell globally. I initially had set up my account to sell in Mexico, in Canada, and in the United States, but recently uh, I had a a bunch of products lost in transit to Canada and Mexico that I had sold. So, and I lost a lot of money doing that. So from my own experience, I, choosing to sell only in the United States, which is the biggest market anyway. So I think by default, this is turned on. So you're going to want to go to edit and disable the allow Amazon to buy my products to sell globally option. That way you make sure that your products are only sold in the United States and not in any of those other countries. In this option, inventory placement option, I choose distributed inventory placement. Amazon will charge you if you choose the other option, which is inventory placement, means that you are ideally minimizing the transition of your items from distribution center to distribution center. So instead of maybe taking three weeks for your products to actually become available to be sold, maybe it takes a little bit less, two weeks. I try both, and in my experience, I don't know why, it it makes absolutely no difference. And the problem with choosing inventory placement service is that Amazon will charge you an additional fee. So to avoid incurring this additional fee, I am choosing the distributed inventory placement, which is a default setting. Now, this one is very important, the automated unfulfillable settings. It used to be that back in the day, you every time that you had unfulfillable inventory, which is basically inventory that has been returned by customers for XYZ reason, and Amazon, when they receive this returned inventory, they deem that the inventory is defective or it's not able to be sold again. That way you choose whether you want it to be returned or whatever. So now Amazon implemented an automatic removal and you have to choose what you want to happen. So if you click edit, and you say enable automate, automated unfulfillable settings, you're gonna come into this screen. And Amazon offers either refurbishment, liquidations, or basically return. I choose to always have my inventory return to me. And the reason is refurbishment and liquidations, you will barely get any value back to you and you'll basically incur a massive loss on that item. If you return the inventory to yourself, then you can either return it to Amazon FBA, which you're really not supposed to, but if the sometimes Amazon returns the inventory to you in perfect sellable condition, and for whatever reason they deem the inventory to not be in sellable condition, if that's the case and you have a perfectly mint item, you can just ship it back to Amazon FBA. 
if indeed the Amazon is defected, then you can sell it with the right disclosures on either Mercari or eBay or another platform like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. And that way you can make a lot of your money back uh, and maybe even break even. And then you can choose the schedule that you want the removals to happen. I choose the fastest frequency, which is weekly, because I get a lot of returns, because I sell a lot of inventory. Approximately, approximately you're going to get between, depending on what kind of category or products you're selling, about 2 to 5% of your inventory are going to be returns. So obviously you're going to be accounting for that in your profit calculations, which I do, but make, make yourself comfortable with the fact that you're going to have about 5% maximum of your inventory return as refunds to yourself. And if you're selling a lot, then you're going to get a lot of returns. So I'm choosing weekly. If you're not selling that much at the beginning, then you can choose all your removals to happen monthly, which is basically telling Amazon that you only want them to lump all your removals, all your all your items to be returned to you once a month instead of once a week. And then you're going to put the address that you want. Either they can go back to your prep center if you use a prep center or to your own house. I always have my returns come back to my own house. That way I can assess the condition and I can place them myself for sale on eBay or Mercari or another platform. Here you can choose um, if you want to participate in the FBA donations program. Currently I have a disable. Um, you know, I'm interested in profit. Uh, I, I can find other ways to donate to people out of my own pocket without having uh, Amazon donate on my behalf. And then the next one if is super, super important. I'm going to explain this right away. FBA product barcode preference right here. So I think by default, Amazon uh, puts commingled inventory. And commingled inventory, what it is, oh, here it is. The default, I believe, is manufacturer barcode. And basically what it is, is UPC barcode. Every single product that you buy from Target, Walmart, whatever the retailer, the box itself or the product itself has a UPC code. This is the product's barcode that comes directly from the manufacturer of the product. Now, Amazon, as a default, they choose manufacturer barcode. And what that means is that whenever you send all your product out to Amazon, if... Um, if they have that product already from other sellers, you are basically giving them the power to sell either your product or the other seller's product. If you have the buy box and you made the sale, Amazon can pick and choose whether to use your products or another seller's products just to fulfill their sales faster. And what that means for you is not good news because you might have inspected all your product yourself and you made sure that it's in perfect condition and you're happy with that. And now Amazon is using some other random seller's products that may be fakes or knockoffs and might be getting you in trouble because the customer might be receiving products that are not your own, might be other sellers. And when they receive it, they're like, wow, this is a fakey. I don't like it. They return it, explain to Amazon that this is a fake product. And now Amazon suddenly has some type of violation on your account, which is totally not your fault. So to avoid all that from happening, even though it might um, be slower deliveries to customers, always, always choose Amazon barcode. What that means is that the, the label you're going to put on each of your products that is your own label associated with your own seller account is the one that's going to be scanned and it's going to be associated with your account when a product sells. That means that when a product sells, you can rest assured that the product is going to be yours and it's not going to be another seller's product. Well, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this rundown on the settings on your Amazon seller account. 
make sure to watch the first video of this series on a training A to C from beginner to advanced level on how to sell on Amazon to make a lot of money. The first video I'm going to link down in the description. Also in the description, you're gonna find links to discounts and free trials on all the softwares and tools that I use personally. I'm also linking videos that I think are, have been the most important that I made myself on how to train you guys. And I'll, I'll create, I'll continue creating all these series of videos for your benefit on how to sell and learn how to sell on Amazon. Make sure to like the video, it really helps the channel and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. What you gain from subscribing is that every time that I post a new video on this series, you're gonna be notified. That way you don't miss any of the videos, okay? See you next time and grind and hustle. It, it is very, very possible to make a lot of money on Amazon FBA. It just takes persistence and dedication, which I believe we all have as human beings. So hit it hard, make a lot of money on Amazon FBA, and I can't wait to continue this series with you. Take care.